What's up y'all and thanks for stopping by the Surge T channel. I am Surge T and tonight I'll be giving my review for AEW All Out for September 5, 2021. And I gotta say, this may be the best pay-per-view of 2021 thus far. And it may be the one of the best pay-per-views I've ever seen that I've seen in the last 10 years. Really, really everybody did an amazing job. I did not hate any of the matches. I did not be like, eh, it's an okay match. I was like, oh, you know, I could have skipped the, the match or go away and go do something, you know, like that. I mean, every match, you know, I watched and I actually enjoyed every single match. That's hard to do, you know. And I went into this um, willing to just accept what's going to be put out there, you know, and just go with it, you know. I mean, there's there's only um, one you know one way to go for AEW and All Out is up when it comes to in comparison to the, the to All Out last year, which I didn't like. So uh, let's get into it, and I'm just gonna go right through the um, the results, and then talk about the shocks, the surprises, the debuts, the first times, and uh, almost the last times, you know, when it came to uh, you know certain things. But let's uh, go into it. Um, uh, Miro. The reigning uh, TNT champion retained against Eddie Kingston. A very hard-hitting match. This, these two guys are tough. Eddie Kingston was tough. Almost more, too much too much for uh, Miro. Miro almost lost the title to him, but he ended up uh, defending the title. And he ended up uh, retaining. And Don Moxley, he wins against uh, Satoshi Kojima. And after the match, after... Uh, Doing what he did and getting through the match and defeating Satoshi Kojima. Minoru Suzuki, uh, one of the most intimidating men in all of Japan, maybe in all of uh, pro wrestling, steps up and steps through that door. And uh, steps up to Mox and uh, what, a, what, a, what an amazing uh, uh, you know fight that broke, broke out between the two. Uh, pretty much just, they were just like pretty much asking the other to hit him hard. So I want to see what you got. And then uh, in the end... Uh, um, Suzuki was able to hit that gotch style, uh, deliver that uh, pile driver to um, Mox, lays him out, and uh, there's a match that's going to happen at uh, on Wednesday for Dynamite between the two, and Mox is, uh, you know, his, uh, what do I call it, his, um, his tour of uh, the Japanese legends continues, and see how he does with uh, Minoru Suzuki. Dr. Britt, uh, she hits her version of the well in her she calls it a pittsburgh uh, sunrise and that flipping pile driver and then she hits the stop and then she does her version of uh of the you know, mandible claw her her you know her submission and she's able to tap out Chris statlander and chris Statlander is unable to uh, you know become the new champion as uh dr Britt baker retains lucha bros and the best match of the night. Maybe looking back now, I think it was the best match of the evening. And there were some great matches there, like I said. But they were, they were able to pretty much whatever um, move, you know, whatever like uh, offense, whatever uh, they threw at the Lucha Bros, you know, the um, Young Bucks, uh, the Lucha Bros were able to just absorb it and brush off it, brush it off, and were able to just survive. Because at one point they should have been pinned and she, they should have uh, been defeated, but they weren't. And so they end up overcoming everything to become the new tag team champions. Now, the Casino Battle Royal, Royale, was actually fun. I liked it. I liked the format with the suits, you know, and the clubs and then the diamonds and then, you know, and all that, the hearts, you know. And then everybody's in there, you know, we see, you know, Nyla Rose and... So you know, Big Swole, we saw, you know, Jamie Hayter and Rebel. We saw the former champion, uh, you know, uh, actually two former champions in uh, Karoshida and Riho. And then uh, we've seen all these others, Di Diamante, even the former NWA Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa was in there. They went through all the suits and then, of course, they had the Joker. All of a sudden, when the Joker's revealed and the last entry comes in, everybody starts cheering. I see Ruby. Holy shit. And it's Ruby Soho 
formerly known as Ruby Riot. Before that, she was uh, Heidi Lovelace. I thought that would have been her name, but it's just like with her and the same thing with uh, Malachi Black. They actually retained uh, their last name or their first name in her case and just added something to it. And she comes in and it ends up being her and Thunder Rosa. And I'm thinking, oh, well, Thunder Rosa will probably win. And then, you know, it's going to be a good rub to uh, to Ruby. But no, in the end, they're on the, uh, you know, they're on the, the curtain. I mean, not the curtain, but the, uh, what do you call it? The, the ring apron, you know, and they're battling out and battling out, you know, on the outside. Not on the inside, but outside. And it ends up that uh, Thunder Rosa is knocked off of the apron and down to the, you know, down to the floor below. And, uh... It is Ruby Soho is the now the number one contender and will have a future shot at Dr. Britt Baker and her title. And I'm glad that AEW did this. And I think that Kony Khan sympathizes with some of these people that they bring in, especially if they're in WWE because they were they were done wrong. Malachi Black is a prime example, and so is Ruby Soho. They were really underused in WWE. And AEW is given she might not win the title when she does, but you know what? This is a pretty good, damn good debut. You know, she debuted and won one of the most, uh, you know, the, one of the most prestigious matches in, in AEW right now, which is a Casino Battle Royale. I believe, you know, um, you, you do the men's uh, double or nothing, you know. And it's just like amazing what can happen when you are hired by a company that cares, you know. And all the things that's happening in WWE right now, and you're just thinking, does do they do they not want, you know, to retain these great talent? You know, they got Karrion Cross, who's known as Killer Cross, and he had an amazing uh, thing going before he came to WWE NXT. He's dominant, and he's on Raw, and he now and he looks like uh, a, a what do you call it a reject from Demolition, like like he's Demolition Cross, like that's his name. The way his, 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 the way he comes to the ring with his, you know, that helmet or whatever you want to call that in his outfit, you know. But then you look at what they do here in AEW. There's no silly gimmicks. There's no nonsense. They let them do what they want to do and look what happens. Guys are amazing. You know, this is truly like probably one of the, the most funnest things, one of the best things that i ever seen. I'm a big fan of her. I love Ruby. I think she's amazing. She's got a unique look for them tattoos that fit her just right. You know, and I love her personality and I love everything about her. And I'm glad she got this. It's an amazing thing. And I'm glad that she's going to get that shot and she's going to give uh, Britt, you know, Baker, she's going to give her a run. She might not win the title, but she'll give her a run. But you never know. She might She might just get that title. I believe Britt uh, Baker has a 90-day reign right now. And so she's, gonna, she's having a pretty decent run right now. So we'll see. Now, uh, MJF and Jericho, and we all know that if Jericho loses, he never wrestles in AEW again. I don't know why people were thinking that, oh, he's going to leave, and then people were, were thinking, oh, he's going to go to WWE and stuff. Like, No, he can't wrestle in AEW. He didn't say anything about him. He even said he'll go to the commentary desk and be a commentator, so he's not going to wrestle. Now, this match, you know, was very good. MJF is a guy who really does, he really is a jackass, and he really is a punk. And everything like that. He plays that that heel persona even outside of uh, you know programming and outside of wrestling in the ring. He 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 bad mouths fans, even the little kids. He's he's a motherfucker. But guy's an amazing wrestler, and the guy really took it to Jericho. At points were there, you thought Jericho was gonna lose, but Jericho is a guy who I I personally say is probably better than he has ever been in the last you know you know ten or twenty years. Like he's really continuing to just get better and better. There's no slowing down. And at one point, he got counted. He got counted down. One, two, three. Aubrey Edwards, I don't know what the hell she was doing. She kept looking forward. She kept looking ahead. She didn't look back at Jericho, whose leg was on the bottom rope before the three count came down. And you see her nodding her head like like this. Like she didn't want to raise his hand. And then Paul Turner, I believe that's the referee's name, he goes, Hey, when you put, before you even hit the third three count, his leg was on the rope. Look, look, she looks back. And it looked like she was going to argue with him. Like, oh, what, what, what? You know? And I go, wait a minute. You just looked around. You just looked earlier like you didn't want to raise. Like you looked sad and you didn't want to raise MJF's hand. And then, you know, they, they, they okay, they, they proceed. Okay, okay. 
you know, then they, you know, the, the match is restarted. And then what happens, uh, because of what happened to uh, MJF's back when he, uh, it was one of those high impact moves and he landed on his, uh, you know, hip or back and his back was bothering him the whole time. And then what did Jericho do? He probably had it in the back of his head. He What he did, he ended up uh, putting him in the walls and he made uh, MJF tap. And so Jericho retains his uh, position as a, as a performer, as a wrestler in uh, AEW. It would have been okay if uh, he if he did lose. And well, you know, at least we can hear him on commentary because he's just hilarious and funny. And he's just probably better than some of the seasoned uh, commentators at times, you know. Because he has such an amazing uh, persona behind uh, the mic, you know. But uh, he is able to do that. He moves on. And... Then you see his boys from the inner circle come out and hug him, you know, give him uh, hugs and kisses. You know, you see the both, <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, then you see the the guys, Sammy and, uh, you know, Ortiz singing to the his Jericho's theme song. And all speaking of Jericho, when his uh, lead guitarist, or one of his guitarists, you know, played him out while the crowds, the crowd was trying to get, because uh, there was a times where it would go in and out. It was crackling the, the, uh, the guitar. So you couldn't really... And then they were trying their best, and then, all, then finally they were able to get a rhythm going, and then they were all singing the song. And then, you know, and that was good. That was really cool. But then Jericho now, of course, like I said, he's uh, he's going to remain in AEW as a performer. And that's going to be, a, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm thinking about the matches that he can have now, yeah, especially with all these people that are popping up now. So uh, let's move on. And that was, that, that, like I said, that was a great match. Now, CM Punk. He proved that uh, he does uh, have still have what it takes. You still got it? Yeah, he still does. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Darby Allen, a man who said he said that when he, if he was 15 years old, that Darby Allen would be his favorite wrestler. I think now he's the wrestler that probably CM Punk respects just as much. You know, we saw in this match... Um, I mean, you know, you see um, Darby Allen sailing through the ropes, you know, pushing, uh, knocking uh, Punk into uh, the barricade. It looked like he was shot. And that's not just a, a thing like someone says, oh, he looks like he was shot out of a cannon when uh, Excalibur said that. You look at him and he looked like he was shot out of a cannon. I think him and Ember Moon are the ones that when they dive through the uh, middle ropes, they look like they're literally shot out of a cannon. And seeing Punk, you know, he looked in great shape. You could tell he was training training hard and there's a point where uh you know he went for the you know go to sleep the gts and then uh unfor you know fortunately for uh, darby he fell through the ropes and went outside and then uh we see a coffin drop an attempt of a coffin drop by uh, darby and then you know punk is laying back and then punk just sits up all of the undertaker and looks back and starts smiling laughing because he kind of lulled him into a false sense of oh, okay i'm gonna be able to nail this <laughs> And then in the end, you know, after I think Darby was going for a, uh, he was on his shoulders and he was going looking to reverse what Punk was doing. And then Punk was able just to stop him midway and he had him on his shoulders and he hit him to go to sleep, GTS, and uh, he wins the match. Sting comes down because Sting said, I'm going to leave you in there, both of you guys, because it's going to be a, a great match and I don't want to be around. I want to be able to just leave you guys alone. He goes back, he comes back down. He goes in there, he kind of checks on Darby, and then he goes to shake uh, Punk's hand. And in my mind, I'm going, is he going to attack him? Is he going to do it? No, they shake hands. And then Darby, and then Darby's on the ground, and then uh, Punk goes over there to shake his hand. He shakes his hand, and then they try to lift him up. And pretty much he was like, kind of shrugged him off like he wanted to get up. Because that's the kind of man that he is, right? He's, he got up, you know, on his own. And then uh, it was a very, very good match. I really enjoyed uh, what Punk did here. You know, and uh, Darby kind of uh, let uh, Sting, uh, let Sting, like uh, Punk, go over because it's his hometown. It's his first match. Is he go honestly going to lose? You know, but I like how they did that because they made it believable. They made it to where like it's not just going. It's not just us going to be saying he's he won the match. He's going to win it. Like it's no surprise. It was actually a surprise. I'm thinking because Darby could have won it. Could have went that way, and it could have been Punk uh, putting the younger guy over. Right, but then he would be, you know, ridiculed, and he would be having everybody on social media saying, "See, look at that. He sucks. He he couldn't even win his de debut, his return match, 
you know, or if he would have won, then people would go, oh, you know, see, he won because uh, it's his hometown and it's his return match. Either way, he it was like a, you know, like, damn if he does, damn if he doesn't, you know what I mean? But uh, he won his first match. Let's see what happens uh, and see who he's going to, like one of the guys in commentary said, who's going to be step up next and and be his next opponent. And I'm wondering that too, and I'm pretty sure you guys are too. Now, um, let's see here. Uh... After this, uh, I forgot about this match, and uh, it was Paul White versus QT Marshall. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, maybe this match should have been earlier. But after, as, but as this match went on and after it was done, I go, I think this match was definitely a match to kind of get everybody, everybody to calm down, you know, everybody to kind of catch their breath. I think that's what it was. Or it could have been a piss break or a, a go to the concessions and get food kind of match. But I enjoyed it. I think for what it was, I love the fact that Paul Weiss is in there just having fun. You know, he's taking care of Paul Camar uh, you know, a Camarado and uh, Solo, you know, throwing them out. Get out of here, you know, you're in my way kind of thing. I love the fact that he was doing the shh and then he would... I think he did it too many times with the shh part. You could have just kept chopping uh, QT Marshall, right? But, you know, pulling the shirt off, ripping it. I think like he did in WWE like that. It's so funny when he does that. It's so much fun. I was at one of the... Um, I believe it was SmackDown or Raw... One of those, and he did that, and everybody quieted down. And then when he, I don't know who the guy was, but when he laid in that chop, it echoed throughout the entire arena. It was, it was like mind blowing. I mean, holy crap, you know. So I thought, that's what I thought. And then um, you see Aaron, Aaron Solo, they come back in him and uh, Camarado are trying to, you know, aid their aid their boy there, aid their their uh, their head trainer, you know, you know, Kuti Marshall. He comes off the top rope and he just met. He's just met with a chop, knocks him down, and then he picks him up and pulls his shirt up and then chops him and he falls down and then like that. He just gets rid of these guys, you know. And then in the end, you know, here comes uh, QT Marshall trying to come down with a move and then he ends up getting caught and hits gets, gets uh, hit with a uh, choke slam by uh, Paul White and uh, there you go. Paul White wins the match and I thought the Gun Club was going to come out with Billy Gunn, but maybe that's something for later time you might do it on dark or dark elevation or maybe even do it on rampage you never know speaking of rampage uh the match that was supposed to happen uh, Pac and uh, andrade it's going to happen on rampage uh so uh you know they're talking about uh, oh you know Pac um missed his flight and then kind of chavo almost kind of let it let it out he goes well i don't know who i don't ha i don't have the number of american airlines and he goes well not that i would know if it was american airlines or not so it's almost like oh man i caught you there chavo i think you're the one that uh caused the uh, flight the, you know, him to miss the flight huh or canceled the flight or whatever and also speaking of uh ruby soho we all know formerly as ruby riot apparently uh jr can't get that out of his head another flub I don't know if someone on YouTube is making a compilation of the, the things that he says that maybe you're not supposed to say, but he called her Ruby Riot at one point. You know, come on, JR, <laughs> get it together. Get it together, my man. Get it together. I don't know what was up with that, but uh, he said that. But uh, <laughs> you know, let's uh, move on. Uh, now, it's the World Championship. Uh, Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, uh, defending against uh, the current Impact World Champion, Christian Cage. Uh, this match was very, very good. Uh, another hard-hitting physical match. Uh, you know, we see at the at the outset, you see um, what's his name, Omega, try to go for the knee. He's known as the he's like a he's like a has a he's got like a bachelor's degree in uh, in, in 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 throwing knees. You know, he's like a professor of of hit you know of uh, Knee strikes, a master, you know, a grandmaster, all those adjectives. But uh, Christian Cage was like hanging in there. Uh, Christian Cage uh, got actually got you know put through a table, or the, or the table got put through him. The first time you ever see something like that, right? And then there's a point where the table set up, and then um, Omega's trying to you know do the uh, what he's doing first. He's trying to do the one wing angel. Not one angel, but he's trying to do the uh, that snap suplex that he does, that real quick snap suplex he does. Wasn't happening. Then he was gonna go for a one wing winged angel. Christian gets out of that, hits a spear, knocks him through that table that was set up, and then I don't know what the kind of tables they have where I think they were maybe too breakable, because one of the legs popped up. 
It's like the base of it popped up, and then as Jericho, as Jericho, as Christian came down, and then you see later on, there's like a slice or, or cut. There's some blood there later on. You'll see. I didn't see it till like the end of the match. That's when you saw it. I mean, the commentators were saying they saw it, but I didn't see it. But uh, yeah, Christian Cage came close. Christian Cage was at there was points where he almost, you know, he almost won the title and. It's just one of those things where, you know, holy shit, you know, are you, is this going to happen? Is, uh, you know, is um, he going to win? And then what happens is that he ends up uh, getting uh, put into the one-winged angel from the top rope. And I love the fact that how he landed was full, flush on his back and shoulder. So he kind of landed flat, you know what I mean? And, you know, kudos to, uh, to um, Omega and to Christian for making that move believable but at the same time you can see those it, they did it safely you know what i mean because you kind of you know especially when it comes off the top rope any kind of move if it's a suplex okay we've seen that before but then sometimes when you do moves and you go wait a minute that's only meant for like when you're on the on the mat you know what i mean doing you're going to do it from the top rope you know <laughs> and he did it and he was able to pin him and then uh they start beating on him you know they start you know they're telling him to stop the damn match, you know, because he just got hit with a one wing angel off the top rope. And then, um, all this commotion, you know, and then, uh, you know, Omega is uh, saying that uh, there's no one that can beat him for the belt. He said they're either somewhere else or they're either dead, you know. And then all of a sudden, the lights cut out. People were chanting, yes, 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 because you know who. Who that who that belongs to? We know who what yes yes beans right, and then the music and then the lights come on and then we see the music hits and then we see Adam Cole, Adam Cole formerly of NXT. Apparently, you know because NXT when they leave WWE they when you leave NXT, you want to get a thirty day uh, no no compete clause. So I guess. That's maybe it's still thirty days, but you know, cause he, cause you know, he extended from July when that was his original third July thirty first, I think his original um when his contract was expired, and he con extended it to through uh to takeover, and I guess I guess it may, maybe it starts from that or starts from his original contract expiring. I don't know, who knows? Because he did talk to um to McMahon, he did have a meeting with him, and maybe this is what it was that he was able to compete right away. And he even did the Adam Cole Bebe. Everybody goes Adam Cole Bebe after he, you know, you know what I mean? And then I'm surprised that that's not copyrighted by, you know, by Vince. But uh, he comes in and uh, he gets into, uh, and after getting into Omega's face, he kind of got into his face. You're thinking, uh oh, because, you know, things happened back in Japan. You know, I believe it was like the Bullet Club. And then they did unceremoniously kicked him out. I believe that's what it was. And then he turns and he and he hits Jungle Boy with a super kick. And then he celebrates with the elite. Then he even stands there. He goes like this. And then both Bucks kiss him. One each one kisses him on the cheek. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know they definitely uh, have uh, accepted him back into the fold. And uh, he's definitely going to be. Uh, I believe he's going to be Kenny Omega's uh, right hand man, and then maybe he'll turn on Omega, kind of give him a payback. Well, we'll see, because right now, it's they're all happy campers. So let's see what happens. Uh, as now we know that Adam Cole has uh, joined the, uh, the elite, and he is on their side, and um, made a quite an impressive debut. I was like, holy shit! Like I could not believe I seen Adam Cole in AEW. And then we hear the flight of the Valkyries. Is that the name of that uh, thing? That uh, certain individual used, uh, I believe, in the beginning of his WWE career. I think believe that he, I think he used it in a ROH, but I believe in other places. But he used it in the beginning. He was known as the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan. And then uh, he's not Daniel Bryan, but he's Bryan Danielson. We knew that, and he makes his de his uh, debut. And um, he comes to the ring. Everybody's going, yes, yes. He gets into the ring. He sides up with uh, the Jurassic Express and with um, Christian Cage. And they all go to uh, come to blows and you start battling each other. Omega and 
Cole and some of the others go up the rampway. And then they have uh, one of the young bucks in there, and they have, uh, you know, others, and then they're just working working them over. And, um, you know, it's just like, uh, I was thinking, did this, did this uh, kind of overshadow Adam Cole's name? But I think that because people did not expect Adam Cole, they were chanting, yes, 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 already, while, it, while, while Omega was talking. And I think they did the whole Adam Cole thing because then they'll kind of throw them off, and then they bring in Brian, Dan Brian Danielson. Was it a bit, was it too was it too much for one segment, or one after after one match to bring these two out? I don't think so. Maybe they're setting up for Brian, Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. Maybe that's going to be a uh, program that they're going to go into and a, a fight and a uh, rivalry, a feud. I wouldn't mind seeing that. That would be great, you know. But uh, I loved this pay-per-view more than made up for last year it's truly their best uh pay-per-view uh this year so far and maybe their best pay-per-view in the history of aew i'm calling it <laughs> you know what i mean it'll definitely be right up there a lot of uh, matches that are going to be contenders for a year of the you know for match of the year you have a tag team you know the, the young bucks and uh and um what do you call it and uh the lucha bros that can easily be match of the year and a tag team match of the year. I mean, I don't know if they do the separate categories for tag team, for women, for a lot of I think they do. But I think match of the year, I think, really means for anything, any kind of match, you know. But uh, really, like, an amazing, just amazing. That was just an amazing match. I'm still, like, buzzing in my head about that tag team title match. That was probably one of the best, uh, if not the best, uh, steel cage matches. These guys utilize the steel cage, like, you know, for every, you know what I mean? Every time they wanted to do something, the you know, steel cage came into play. I mean, I think they used the steel cage every minute, every other, you know, every move almost, pretty practically. You know, I mean, I know the Young Bucks were trying to uh, destroy, uh, you know, the, the, the Lucha Bros with the cage, you know, throwing up throwing up against the uh, steel cage, you know, but then the Lucha Bros got a taste of the, of the steel as well. So, but uh, yeah, that was my favorite match. I really, I think that was definitely my favorite match. Um, Favorite moment, that holy shit moment, I think my favorite moment was uh, Ruby Riot. Just because it is, it's just so great. You could see how happy she was. You could see it just like, especially after the end when she won it. She was just like, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. You know, I'm I'm getting love and everything, you know what I mean? She, was, she got a lot of big applause. I mean, even during the Casino Battle Royal, uh, Royale, um, Riho got a big applause. You know, and I'm happy for that. That's good because sometimes people see her. She's gone for some time. I guess she's going in Japan or wherever, you know, doing like that, you know. But, uh, you know, but the surprises were all great. Um, Adam Cole practically almost, uh, you know, knocked me out of my seat. My mouth was open like, what? Holy shit, you know. And then uh, Brian Danielson, you know. I mean, all three of them, them, them two and uh, Ruby uh, Soho, I'm not going to be like um, JR and say Ruby Riot, but... Uh, those were really, really amazing moments. You know, Punk winning his first match and, and competing in his first match in seven years. Uh, you know, Christian Cage giving an amazing effort, um, but he didn't win the title. But he still he still walks out a champion as he's still the Impact champion. But uh, let's see what happens uh, as, you know, they mentioned um, Full Gear. Daniel Bryan might be, or Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Adam Cole. Ruby Soho, listen to that, folks. Look at those names. And they're just making WWE look more, you know, just look more uh, insignificant as the days go by, weeks, months go by. WWE needs to step it up. They need to stop messing with people's uh, careers and making them look stupid. You know, you better look at this and this pay per view. If 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 I were WWE, if I were Vince McMahon, or if I were Triple H. Look at this pay-per-view and maybe you can take some pointers off of how you do pay-per-views and how you make people, you know, WWE had Edge last year. They had um, Brock Lesnar and and um, Becky Lynch making their returns. Those were great, you know, epic returns. Do more of that. Do more of pushing people the right way so that they can have amazing runs instead of like making people so, so what do you call it? So like, I don't give a fuck their attitude. That they're gonna can't wait to leave, and then you imagine, let's say, because October I believe it's the thirtieth or thirty first of October that that's when uh, the ninety day uh, no compete clause for Bray Wyatt or Wyndham Rotunda now, his thing is gonna expire. 
you imagine uh, Full Gear and he makes his appearance in Full Gear? Maybe, if anything, you know, he, maybe he found his sister Abigail, well, maybe not sister Abigail, but his, uh, his uh, you know, female cohort. Uh, I like to see um, Bray Wyatt or whoever his name is going to be uh, hook up or link up with Abaddon. You imagine that? Holy shit, my mind's, my mind's going a thousand miles thinking, holy shit, what they, the things that they could do together. You know, if he comes to AEW, but we'll see. But anyway, that's my uh, video for, uh, and, you know, my review of, uh, and my thoughts of um, AEW All Out for uh, 2021. Uh, August 9th, I mean, September 5th to be exact. So for those of you who uh, stopped by and uh, checked out my video, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.